Hello, and welcome to this Dell EMC Unity video covering asynchronous replication. In this video, I'll give an overview of Dell EMC Unity's native asynchronous replication solution. This video will also cover the components of asynchronous replication, which include the replication interfaces and replication connection. Additional resources will also be provided at the conclusion of this video. Replication can be configured natively within a Dell EMC Unity system in three different modes, synchronous, which is not covered in this video, asynchronous, and manual. Asynchronous replication utilizes the concept of a recovery point objective, or RPO. The RPO is the acceptable amount of data measured in units of time, which may be lost due to a failure. Asynchronous replication updates the destination resource at a defined interval, either configured for a number of minutes or hours. Each change to the source resource is tracked and eventually transferred to the destination. There is also the option to configure a manual replication session. With manual replication, data is only sent to the destination when the user runs a sync operation. Asynchronous replication leverages Dell EMC Unity's unified snapshots technology for tracking changes to the source resource between RPO intervals. When a replication session is established, two system snapshots are created on the source and destination storage resources. You will see these snapshots in Unisphere, but they are not user modifiable and do not count towards snapshot limits. The snapshots are refreshed and updated during each RPO interval to keep the source and destination resources in sync. Shown here is a list of resources that support asynchronous replication. Asynchronous replication can either occur between pools within the same system or over an ethernet network between remote systems. For remote replication, the systems can either be physical virtual, or a mix of the two. Before creating a replication session between two systems, replication interfaces must be created on each system and a replication connection between the systems must be established. A replication interface is used to transport data to a destination system. At least one replication interface must be created on each SP of the system. The replication connection is a trusted link created between the systems participating in replication. This trusted link is used for replication management operations and the data path between the pair of remote systems. Once the replication connection is established, replication sessions on storage resources can be created. Note that replication interfaces and a replication connection is not required for pool-to-pool -pool replication. Next, we will talk about replication interfaces. In this example, asynchronous replication will be configured between System 1 and System 2. After connecting at least one Ethernet interface from each SP to the network, replication interfaces can be configured. Once the interfaces are created, the replication connection can be established. This connection automatically matches and creates connections between interfaces on each system. In Unisphere, the Interfaces page is found under Protection and Mobility. Click the plus sign to create a new interface. Here, the physical interface to create the replication interface on is selected, and the networking information is provided. The drop-down list provides a list of interfaces that can be used. After creation, the replication interfaces are displayed on the interfaces page. Asynchronous replication can also be configured to systems connected to different networks. In this example, System 1 is connected to a different physical network than System 3. System 2 can replicate to both of these systems by connecting front-end interfaces to each network. Once the replication interfaces and the replication connections are made, the interface paths are created. Some networks use VLANs to isolate network traffic. Asynchronous replication also allows users to tag a VLAN on replication interfaces to override default VLAN settings on the network. In this example, System 1 replicates to System 2 over VLAN 37 while VLAN 73 is used for replication between System 2 and System 3. Multiple replication interfaces can also be created on the same physical port. More complex networks are also supported by mixing VLANs and multiple network configurations. Next, we will discuss the replication connection. On the Connections tab of the Replication page, click the plus sign to create a new connection. After filling in the management information for the remote system, the connection mode is specified. In this example, asynchronous replication is being configured. If synchronous replication will also be used, set the mode to both. 
then click Next. The bandwidth schedule step is shown. Asynchronous replication allows users to control the rate data is transferred to a remote system by defining bandwidth schedules. In this example, replication is configured to replicate data in both directions. A bandwidth schedule can be created on the replication connection on system A to control the transfer of data to system B. This can be set at time of creation of the replication connection or added and modified on an existing remote connection at any time. Creating a bandwidth schedule on system A does not affect data being received from system B. To create a bandwidth schedule, click the plus symbol. Here the settings of the schedule are specified. The maximum bandwidth setting is used to control the rate at which data is replicated to a remote system. This can be set to zero to limit traffic from running, be set to a specific value, or be left blank to allow replication traffic to flow unrestricted. The days of the week can also be specified. Leaving the checkboxes deselected will run the schedule in all days. Next, the start and end hour can be specified. In this example, the scheduled time zone setting is set to UTC-5 for Eastern Time in the US and Canada, so times in the drop-down menus are based on the time zone. When setting the time, you are specifying a window for when the schedule will be run, leaving the times blank run the schedule for all hours of the day. After updating the values on the screen to the desired settings, click OK. The bandwidth schedules page is updated with the new schedule. Schedules added here will only be enforced for data leaving this system to the remote system. More schedules can be added and customized as needed to control traffic on specific days or during specific times. The bandwidth schedule page enforces schedules from top to bottom, so it's suggested to order the schedules from most specific to most generic. In this example, traffic is limited on all days to 204,800 kilobytes per second by the last schedule on the list, but other schedules are listed and therefore enforced first. On Saturdays and Sundays, the replication traffic has no restrictions, while from Monday through Friday, it is more restricted to reduce network traffic. Once done, click Next. The summary page lists all settings being configured. If everything is OK, click Finish. The replication connection is now created. This window can be closed at any time. Once a connection is created, individual replication sessions for storage resources can be created. For more information about replication on Dell EMC Unity, please refer to the other resources listed here. Thanks for watching.